love it where it says in 1 Corinthians 13. It says that his love never fails. That his love endures. That despite what you may be going through, hear this family, he has a type of love that doesn't have the potential to fail. That even, and I love it that it says in Rome is here, we were reading it earlier to the team and I'm gonna read it to you guys today. It says Romans 8, 34. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died. But even more, has been raised, come on somebody, he is also at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. His love never fails. But the Apostle Paul went a little bit further. He said this, he said, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or even danger in this world? He goes into 37, he says no to all of these things. I just believe we're joining in with the Apostle Paul today that we're also saying nothing can separate me from this type of love. Because his type of love never stops chasing after you. That his love, despite where you may be at, despite the pain, despite the persecution, that you can find yourself, my God, in the darkness at the rock bottom. His love will meet you in the valley. He's the God of the mountain, but he's also the God of your valley. Even under, on a rock, his love will meet you there. My God, receive his love today because his love will never fail. Heartbreak, his love will never fail. Mistakes and disappointment, his love will never fail. Where we don't get it right, his love will never fail. Where we don't know how to move forward, his love will never fail. Where you, you may find yourself right now, you don't know what your next step may be. But my God, when his love shows up, peace shows up. When his love shows up, comfort shows up. When his love shows up, I thank God that he's a weight maker because every single time his love shows up, we continue to see mountains move out the way. Rules begin to open. Healing begins to happen. Breakthrough begins to happen because when his love shows up, nothing in this world can stop the love of God. Nothing can stop his love. So the apostle Paul said it this way. He said, I am persuaded, my God. When you have gone through enough with Jesus, there's nothing that can change your thinking. You are so persuaded, my gosh. When you've seen his track record, he's undefeated in your life. He's undefeated in your life. Despite the blows you may be taking, I don't know who this word is for today. Despite the blows you have taken in this year, come on somebody, in this season, we're not talking about your history, we're talking about right now. Can somebody be honest with me today? In this season. And guess what? He's still undefeated. Because anytime we celebrated a resurrection this, this last Sunday, it reminds us this family, hear this today, receive this today, that even on a dark Friday and a silent Saturday, maybe you're in that season right now. Thank God he always has a plan for you. Even when you don't see the plan, hear me today. In the love and all grace of Jesus Christ, he has a plan for you. On the way to service this morning, I don't know who it is for. I just continue to hear the voice of God say, I love you. 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 Driving over the bridge, I love you. Came in this morning, Caleb was ministering in a song, didn't even know what the third song was going to be. Oh, 
He loves me. God is whispering to you right now. He's whispering to you, despite the world may be louder than his voice right now. Hear this. He's so close to you, he doesn't have to scream it at you. That's when you're in proximity of God. That he's so close, the world will want to scream it because the world is in far distance from you. It seems as though that they're close to you, but your pain is actually far removed because your God is right in the, the between of your pain and there. And he's close enough to you where he doesn't have to scream it to you. He wants to whisper it to you. I love you. I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. You're my chosen one. I am with you. I am here with you. In this season, come on. In this season, somebody received that word today. In this season, this is the series we're going into. God is speaking something right now. He, he said, in, 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 in this season, not in your next, in this season, I am with you. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for what you're doing in this place, Lord God. This place is holy. This place is anointed. This place has my strength. This place is the very thing I need to move forward. If your love is here, your peace is here. If your love is here, your, your strength is here. Wherever your love is, the very thing we need is present now. We embrace it. When we embrace you, almighty God, we embrace the very thing that we need. Even today, open up our eyes, open up our ears, open up our heart to receive what you are already doing in the midst of our life. We speak to the activity that's in our life right now. For what we see and what we do not see, you are always moving in the midst of our life. The activity of God is so present in our life right now, there's sometimes we don't even see it. But today's a new day, and we rejoice today, Lord God. Open up our eyes to begin to see the very activity that you are doing in the midst of our life and our family life. You are always moving. Even when we don't see it, you're moving. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout. Amen, 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 amen. You can stay, just stay standing for me. I want to read the scripture. If you can find yourself in Genesis 3, verses 1 through 9. If you have it, say amen. It's going to be on the, on the screen for you. Genesis 3, verses 1 through 9. It says, Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you can't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden, but, uh, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said you must not eat it or touch it or you will die. No, you will certainly not die, the serpent said to the woman. In fact, God knows that when you eat it and your, and your eyes will be, begin to open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food and delightful to look at it. And that it was desirable for attaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it, some of it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. And then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. 
Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And they hid, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. We're going to camp out here in verse 9. So the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, Where are you? I want to preach preach this message from this subject title, family. Here I am. Come on, somebody shout that with me. Here I am. Father God, we thank you for your word today, Lord God. As our hearts are already prepared to, to be ministered to from you, Lord God, speak your word today. Encourage us, build our faith today. As Matthew 6.33 says that we seek your righteousness, we seek you. All things will be added, but first, Lord God, we seek you. Minister to us today. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody shout, amen, amen, amen. Go ahead and have your seat, family, amen. Come on, can we put our hands together for worship? Come on. Amen. Amen. While you're being seated, I also want to dismiss our students' ministry, middle and high school. If you're, if you're still in here, the, the team is waiting for you. We're going to have an awesome time in there. But family, come on. We are kicking off. I'm super excited for today. We are kicking off a new series. Come on, somebody. Can we put our hands together? The new series is called I Am Here. And I really do believe this, family. Come on, if you're in a season, hear, hear my heart on today. In this, se- in this series, hey, if you, this series is about making sure we are aligning ourselves, hear this, with the word of God. Yes. And we're aligning ourselves with worship. We're aligning ourselves in the true identity that Christ has created you to be in. That he created it that we find right here in Genesis that God created us in his image. He created us for uninterrupted worship. That God wants an everlasting relationship with you. In order to move forward in that, we must first identify our location. In order to move forward with anything in life, you have first, here it is, you have first must identify your location. The beauty about this is that what God is saying in this series, that it's not just about getting there. It's about what God wants to do right here. So maybe you're in a season, and we're praying this for you. Maybe that you're in a season right now. Hear me. Maybe you're feeling passionless. Maybe you're in a season right now where you just feel stuck, Mark. You just feel stuck. You feel as though, come on, you're like that lawnmower. Come on, Julius. That lawnmower that just will not start. Come on. I had trouble this weekend trying to start that lawnmower. And you're just cranking it and you're cranking it and you feel as though that you can't move forward. I believe this, and this is what we're praying with, and this is what I believe the assignment of Celebration Church is to come alongside of you and to help you get there. But in order to get there, here it is, you must appreciate here. In order to get there, we have to learn how to appreciate and value what God is doing in the midst of right here. So maybe your marriage feels stuck. Maybe your career feels passionless. Maybe you're in a season of disappointment after disappointment. And I believe this family, that God is relighting, litting, whatever the, the proper grammar is for there that God is getting ready to set you on fire to get there. But in order to get there, we must appreciate right here. Because why? Because God is right here. A lot of times we live our life speaking about the next. If when I get to the next, when God does that in my life, when I get this career or when I get to marry this spouse, we, 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 we're waiting for the next. And God is saying, my God, when you appreciate and see and value what I'm doing right here, because if I'm right here, here is holy, here is anointing, here is everything that you need. In order to get there, we must learn to see the lessons that God is doing in our life right now. And I really do believe that this series is going to speak to you. Because I say this because there's, in every season, there's values. In every season, there's, God is preparing you for there. 
but he wants to teach you something right here. And and matter of fact, even before we go forward, I I, want to draw your attention to this because I I believe that God is discipling us in this season to get there. I believe that God is doing something even here in Celebration Church to get there what God wants to do. But my God, even in a movie theater, hear hear my heart, he's right here. Never try to abort the season that you're in or trying to get to what God wants to do in your future because you will miss, my God, you will miss the activity of what God is doing. Could he be transforming you for the future? Could he be setting you up and preparing you for the future? Let us not miss or embrace what he's doing here because he's setting you up and preparing you for sustainable and longevity of where he wants to take you. He doesn't want to send you there too quick because if he sends you there too quick, the very thing that he's sending you to can actually crush you but he wants to prepare you because God is a God that does not know how to fail. He's all about endurance. Come on somebody. That he wants he's looking for longevity in your life and he's setting you up. Matter yes. of fact, if you have your phones do this for me. Just pull out your phones real quick. I want to I wanna talk to you about the drawing board. This is something that we're going to be doing beginning in May. Come on, text this number in. Come on, even for our online folks, text this number in. Text TDB to 703-844-1223. I'm going to say the number again. I feel like I'm on a radio station. 703-844-1223. Text TDB to that. What is the drawing board? The drawing board is where we're going to meet, where God is taking us back to the drawing board so that we can rediscover our passion in Christ. If you're in a season right now where you're looking to actually move forward in your faith, I'm telling you right now, you do not want to miss this. If you were, you went through the call with us on 21 days of prayer and fasting, come on family, who was on that 7 a.m. prayer call? And what God was speaking, God is saying, I'm getting ready to do it again. And I, if you came, if you can't make it on those Monday morning, we're going to record it for you because I believe that God is going to be releasing some things. It's time to get back to the drawing board. It's time things happen at the drawing board. Passion is released at the drawing board. Vision is cast at the drawing board. Mission is established at the drawing board. Maybe you're in a season right now where you're feeling as though what your next step doesn't look like. I believe this God is taking you back to the drawing board. God is saying, come back to the drawing board. Come back to the fundamentals. Come back where you first fell in love with me. Why? Because I'm getting ready to release some things to you that is going to light you on fire and send you where I'm getting ready to send you to. And I just believe that God is getting ready to do something. Why? Because Sunday's is not enough. Sunday's not enough. By the time Wednesday comes, what you got on Sunday is kind of the life will drain it out. So we have to create rhythms and routines in our life that keeps us in the proximity of God because life is always looking to drain you while God is looking to pour into you. How are you setting up your life to be poured into by God? How are you setting up? It's like when we were at the amusement park. Come on, we got those refillable cups. Come on, Pastor Brenda, come on. And any time that we got thirsty, come on, somebody come walking around that park with them bad kids. Oh, my gosh. I was looking for, I was looking, where's the next refreshment? I'm so thirsty right now. And any time I needed a drink, I had to be in the right position in order to be poured into. God wants to pour into you this season, but are you in the right position? God wants to do something in your life that's getting ready to set you up to there, but he's looking for you to be in, a, in the right position. Where we found out here with Adam, that Adam actually lost his position because he wasn't in the right position. And I just believe that God is getting ready to teach you something in this season. He's not just taking you somewhere, but God is teaching you something right here. See, speaking about teaching Jesus, God God is the ultimate teacher. God is the ultimate teacher. The first question that God has asked man was, where are you? Found right here in chapter 3. God is an amazing teacher. I believe Adam felt like how I felt in elementary school. When a teacher will call on me. Come on, there's some teachers right here. Come on, Mark and Angela. I never wanted a teacher to call on me. Especially if I wasn't prepared. 
especially if I didn't do my work, especially if I know I didn't have the answer. I believe Adam felt like how I felt when Adam, when God called out to Adam, he called out and he said, where are you? This wasn't a question about location. This was rather a question about posture and position. Is that Adam actually lost his position because Adam was more focused on there instead of here. Adam and Eve were more focused about what they thought they didn't have, and they began to look at the other. They began to look at something else. They began to look at what they didn't have, not knowing that they had everything right in the midst of the God. And the enemy would easily creep into your life and will begin to have you looking at uh, across the fence to see if the grass is more greener than where you are right now. But now you are in a season where God is showing you, I, I'm giving you everything that you need. But the voice of the enemy will always try to pull you over to the other side. And I love that God sets out and he says, where are you? And Adam and Eve lost their position because they chose something else. See, the God created Adam to walk in dominion. God created Adam to, to multiply. God created Adam with authority. Now, because he chose a different route, now Adam is losing this place of royalty. Adam is losing this place of position. Adam is losing this place of dominion. God is saying, where are you? And I believe God is saying the same thing to us today because despite what happened in a garden, thank God, Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane and he crushed the, the devil right there in a garden and what he did on Calvary he actually put us back where we're supposed to be thank God that he's a restorer but Jesus also leaves us with no excuse to walk in the power and authority that he's given us despite what Adam did Jesus restored despite the decision that Adam made Jesus actually put us back in our rightful place I believe this today, family, that Jesus, yes, he is. He's our God. Everything that, everything that Adam and them had, we have right now. Look at the beauty of this. Even when Jesus told the disciples now, when he breathed on them, he said, I give you power and dominion and authority. This is the same language that God was using with Adam. Jesus now saying to the disciples, and he's saying, what i done on Calvary, I'm now releasing to you to walk into your next season, to walk into greater, to do great things in the name of Jesus Christ. God has a mission. God has a plan for you today. He has a calling on your life. But he's also setting you up to fulfill it with power, dominion, and authority. You were created just like Adam was created with the beauty of this. God does not just hover over you. God is actually with you. He's walking with you. He was walking to have uninterrupted relationship with you. Because I, what I said earlier is that it's about here is now. Say that with me. Here is now. Here is now. Stop, stop counseling. Here, stop counseling what God wants to do now because you're waiting for what God wants to do there. I, but matter of fact, Pastor Brenda said this when we was at the airport and it hit me. I was like, you better, you better preach to me, Pastor Brenda. She says, stop putting off what God wants to do now with the church because it doesn't seem as the church is ready. You just got to stop canceling the now and saying when we get there, that's when God wants to do it. But God is saying, no, 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 vision is right here. Vision is not there. Vision is right here. What God wants to do right here, even when you don't see it, God says, believe it and speak it because I want to do it right here. Stop canceling your future because you're waiting for God to do something there. But God is saying, I want to actually do it right here. So if you need peace, God said, you know what? Peace is right here. If you need strength and vision, vision and strength is right here. Here, don't wait. Don't put off the next for what God wants to do now. Because I said it earlier, if the great I am is here, everything with the great I am is present right here. I am 
here. I am here. I share this with the team a lot. To be honest, a transparent moment. I feel as though sometimes on Monday mornings, I can be the worst leader. On Monday morning, I, 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 I feel like God can move in here mighty, doing great things. Monday morning, Pastor Brennan has to encourage me off the cliff of disappointment. The team has to come beside me here and, and, and encourage me. I'm being transparent because sometimes in my life, I'm so ambitious for more and I don't appreciate what he's doing right here. Don't allow ambition to reign on your parade of what God is doing right now. Yes. So I'm learning even more in this season because God is moving. Me and Pastor Brent, we, we, we love what God is doing here, but there's so much vision. And, and God, I can see what God is doing. I can see what God is hearing. And I say, my God, when we get there, oh, my God. But God is, is reminding me, no, no, Anthony, I am an artist. Yes. I am an artist. Are you telling me, Anthony, that you only appreciate my artwork when it's finished? Say that. Do you only appreciate the stroke and, and the different colors of what I'm creating in your life that you only appreciate it when the, when the artwork is actually finished? Can you fall in love with what I'm doing in the midst of the creation? Why he's creating, can you fall in love with it? But a lot of times you can be like me. You're waiting for God to sit back and say, I'm done. Now we can appreciate what he's doing. God is saying, learn to fall in love with me with the process. When you learn how to fall in love with me with the process, learning how to fall in love and being grateful with gratitude, it actually takes you from here to there. Because the heart of gratitude will always lead you forward in the presence of God. Don't allow, and I say it again, don't allow your thinking to rain on your parade of the activity of what God is doing in your life right now. He's moving in your life right now. He's doing something in your life right now. Even on my board in the office, I have it, I have it written, I said, we will get there. And if Sarah, my director of operation, she actually put underneath there, she said, I put, we will get there and she put in red because, you know, Jesus' words are red, so you really got to pay attention to those words. She put underneath this, she said, in his timing. Right. We will get there. Pastor Brenda would say, I, I, I'm walking around the house. We will get there. We will get there. We will get there in his timing. If his timing is here, we are already there. If his timing is going to be over there, then God will show us how to get there. It's the same thing of when they were in the Old Testament with the tabernacle. Fire by, fire by night, cloud by day. Wherever the Holy Spirit, wherever the, the Shekinah glory was, they, they took them where they was getting ready to go. If his cloud was here, then God is here. It's what he wants to do here. But when the cloud begins to move, it's time to pack up and move right along with him. So wherever he is, is where I need to be. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but you're waiting for God to do something there, but his timing is right here. His timing is right here. There's something that he wants to do right here. Your question should be in this season, my God, what do you want to do right here? Here I am. Here I am. What do you want to do in this season? Not just my next season. I'm not, I, I'm not teaching, I'm not unteaching your five-year plan. That's a beautiful thing. To be honest, maybe I am because God, is, he will mess up your five-year plan. Yeah. Yeah. He, will, he, will, he will mess that plan all up. But, but do the planning because we, we, we preach that. <laughs> do the planning. <laughs> Make sure you plan. We don't want that on YouTube. But God wants to do something in this timing. So a lot of times we spend our energy planning for the next and we spend no energy planning for the now. And we don't, and so what we begin to do, we begin to train our mind to live in the future and never actually see what God wants to do right now. So we're always chasing the next. That's it. We're always chasing. So we, 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 we don't put position our heart in gratitude. We position our heart and our mind as if it's a rat race that we're chasing after. 
so now we never get an opportunity to, to just rest and breathe and sit in his presence because we're so ambitious of running after to the next. So what can I do next? Being, being a Washingtonian and growing, and that, that's created in my mind. What do you do for a living? What are you doing next? How can I help? It's part of my DNA of even being here. But the more I sit with him, God is actually showing me to actually embrace the now because the now will carry you to the future. Because I, I, want, I want to give you four points as I, as I unpack this a little bit about what Adam, with this relationship with God and Adam. That right here that I said earlier that Jesus restored it. We understand that you guys are Bible scholars. Jesus restored it. But if the great I am is right here in your life, I want to speak to your now season. If the great I am is right here in your life, vision is right here. Vision is not there. Vision is here. God created us to have an everlasting relationship with us. He did not create us for religion. He created us for relationship. That he created us to act. When he created us, he had a vision for your life. So whatever is connected to you has to have vision as well. Your marriage has to have vision. Your career has to have vision. Your relationship has to have vision. If there's anything in your life right now, if it seems as though if it's on life support, my first question as a pastor to you, does it have vision? Because anything that has vision will always live. Anything that has vision will always breathe. When God comes in your life, he's here to breathe on you. He's here to release life to you. If there's anything that's stagnant, my first question to you, does it have vision? Because in Proverbs 29, 18, it says this. We all know this scripture. It said, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the Lord happy is he. Wherever there is vision, things become alive. Wherever there is no vision, things begin to die. Could it be that God is saying in this season, how to re rediscover your passion for something? Give it vision. What's the vision for your life right now? Not the vision just for your future, my gosh, but the vision for your now. What does your vision in your life look like right now? I love this quote. It says this, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. I'll say it again. Vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Even when you can't see it, vision will manifest it. Give it vision. That business that God is telling you started, give it vision. Give it vision. If you're going through a condition in, in your life right now, a health condition, I believe it's through supernatural, when through faith mixed with vision, we begin to see what God wants to do in our life. Mix vision with faith and begin to see the manifestation that's in your life. Whatever that's struggling in my life right now, I'm in a season right now, give it vision. Begin to write it now, give it vision. Begin to cast vision over it right now. Adam right now, he lost his vision, my gosh, because they started to look at the other. He didn't just lose his place with relationship, but he also lost his vision. Vision. Vision shows what you already have in your life. Vision will begin to manifest and begin to reveal the very thing that God is doing in your life. But vision, I say this with vision, is like that magnified glass. Even when you don't see it, if you expose vision over it, God will begin to show you, I'm already doing something right in the midst of your life. Point number two, write this down. If the great I am is here, not only is vision here, provision is here. Provision is here. We serve a God who does not give vision without provision. When he gives you assignment, he also gives you vision. But when he gives you assignment, he's not only give you vision, he gives you provision. Let me prove it right here. Genesis 2 and 8. Watch this. It says the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. In the east, there, there he placed the man he had. Form One scripture. Watch this. God planted before he placed. 
God prepared before he sent. Before God put Adam in the garden, he actually planted the garden first. The garden was waiting on Adam to take his rightful place to begin to walk in a calling that God created him for. What I'm saying to you, I'm speaking this over your life. The vision and the passion that God has created for you is actually waiting for you to take your rightful place. That God doesn't create you or set you up and prepare you for, any, for nothing. He's actually, actually setting your guarding up right now. That he's preparing it right now so that when you're going through in this season, please understand your guarding has been getting set up oh, right over there. Before he sent Adam, he prepared the place. He prepared the place. I want, I want to say it this way in 2 Corinthians. I love this. Chapter 9, verse 8. I love how it reads from the Amplified. It says, and God is able to make all grace, every favor and earthly blessing come in abundance to you so that you may always under all circumstances, come on, regardless of the need, have complete sufficiency in everything, being completely self-sufficient in him and have an abundance for every good work and act of charity. Vision attracts provision. If you're looking for provision in your life, here it is. Give it more vision. Vision is a magnet for provision. The more vision you cast, the more provision come your way. This is why I love being around people who know how to cast great vision. Because it teaches me, it teaches me, even as a pastor, a leader, a husband, a father, it teaches me for the very thing that I have need in my life to do the very thing that I was created. If I give it vision, provision will always come. So the very thing that you're struggling with, that you need provision in, my, my question goes back, how does the vision look like? Because vision will always attract provision, but I'm going to say it this way. Don't reject God's provision just because it doesn't look like your preference. There could be pro provision in your life right now, but it's wrapped up in a different gift that you're, you're missing or it doesn't fit your preference. So you're waiting and you're praying, my God, you're losing weight because you're fasting. And God is saying, I already did it. I already sent it your way. Because when I get vision, I get provision. It is up to us to actually choose the provision that God has placed in our life. It may not come like you may want it, but I, I can share this with you. It will actually do what, is, what it was called to do in your life. Don't miss the provision in your life because it comes in a different image that you've been praying for. The image may look different, but the assignment is still the same. Don't miss what God wants to do. I wrote this down. When God gives you the assignment, he also gives you the vision. Staying connected to him always leads to the provision. Your provision is here. Why? Because your God is here. Vision, provision. Provision lives with the promise. My point number three is this. Vision is here. Provision is here. Peace is here. Peace is here. Peace is here. Even in the midst of a garden, even in the midst of that garden, there was still a snake. Even in the midst of having everything that they needed to fulfill their purpose and assignment in life, there was still a snake. Do not allow the snake or storm in your life to deter you away or even nullify the faithfulness of God that's in your life. Do, I say it again. Come on, I, I hear you, Erica. I say it again. Because here's what we want to do. We, you can either be like me sometimes. If the storm shows up, then that must be an indicator that I'm in the wrong place. If the snake shows up, that must be an indicator that I missed the step of walking with God. But just because the snake shows up, just because the storm shows up, it does not nullify the, his faithfulness of who God is. Matter of fact, it validates it even more. 
Because it actually says this, that God said he would never leave you or forsake you. So even in the midst of the storm and even in the midst of a snake whispering to you, your God is still there because this is the place that he called you to be. Even when snakes come around your life, peace is still there. I'm speaking that to somebody right now. Even in the midst of this season, peace is still available. Peace is still there. Even in his presence, storms can still be around us. But I love it how it says in Isaiah 26, 3, it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. My mind is not on a snake. My mind is not on a storm. My mind is on King Jesus. And as long as you keep your mind on King Jesus, he will keep you in perfect peace. Do not allow the snake to whisper to you anymore. The snake will always get you away from the provision. The snake will always get you away from the vision. The snake will always get your mind off the attention that peace is always available. But when my God will show up in your life and you put your mind on God, vision is there. Provision is there. But peace is it's right there as well. I wrote this down in, my, in my, my notes. God is able to give you peace even when it feels like your life is going in pieces. This is why, the, it's how are you still smiling going through that peace? How are you still rejoicing after that happened? Peace. You can go through some things in life God will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. You will find yourself rejoicing in times when you should be depressed. Peace. The world can't give this type of joy. The world doesn't have this potential. It only comes from God. So understand this, in order to get through life, you, we have to make sure that we're in the position to receive his vision, his provision, but, and also his peace because we live in a world full of storms and snakes that will want to drain you from the vision that God has given you. As I get ready to close out, patience is here. Patience is here. Watch this. Hopefully, hopefully this is making sense. I'm trying to teach it a little bit. I don't want to preach it. But watch the patient and learning to be content in him is the key to moving forward in Christ. Patience. Patience is, is, is endurance with God. Learning to be still enough while you're still moving forward in God. I can say it this way. Holy contentment is this. Learning to be full in him and hungry at the same time. Satisfied, but also eager to move forward in him. Our, how's your holy contentment today? Where are you? Are you more focused on there or are you content in Christ? Because being, being content in him is the fullness, is being hungry that he can only satisfy you. Let us not believe the lie of the enemy anymore for your life. That we can always live a life, I call it this, we can have fishbowl eyes constantly looking at everybody else's life. I can't make my eyes that big. But we can easily live a life like that. We're looking at everybody else's life. I even also, I call it giraffe neck. We can be here and be very nosy at everybody else's life. See, understand is that comparison is the thief of your joy. So you can easily begin to compare yourself. Look at what they're doing. Look at what this is going on. Look at the vision that's in their life. Look at the provision that's in their life. If we would just focus on here more and not focus on there, what that was going on in their life, we would see that the same joy that they have is available to us right now. The grass may not be that greener on the other side. The grass is actually greener wherever God is. And if God is right here where you are, your grass is green too. Despite what your eyes may tell you, your grass is still green. It's the, it's the filter or the lens that you're looking through that's going to determine if it's green or not. 
Because if you're comparing yourself or looking at the wrong scoreboard in life, we will always be filled with depression and filled with sadness and grief because we're measuring ourselves on the wrong scoreboard. Somebody in here needs to change the scoreboard in life. You're looking at the scoreboard that life presents to you and you think you're losing and all along you were winning. You can feel like me on a Monday morning sometimes looking at the wrong scoreboard. Ambition for more. God is saying, son, you're winning and you don't even know it. You're winning and you don't even know it. Measure yourself on the right scoreboard. Measure yourself on what scripture says about your life. Measure yourself, finding yourself in the identity that Christ has created you. Because if you measure yourself off of what the world is saying, the world will always say, look at you, you're failing. You're not good enough. You're not great. You missed the boat. Can I share this with you? If you think you missed that boat, that boat wasn't even for you. Your boat is now. Your boat is right now. The boat that passed you five, ten years ago, that wasn't your boat. Your God is setting you up for what? Right now. Your boat is here. Somebody received that today. Your boat is here. The woman of God preached a couple Sundays ago. You got next. And I believe it's a prophetic word for this church. Don't think that you missed anything. Your boat is right now. What you've gone through, God can turn it for your good, for his glory. Don't ever think that you missed because you didn't have provision. Don't think that you missed because you didn't have enough vision. Don't think that you're in this season of life because the boat that you missed a couple years ago is the main reason why you're in this, sea, in this predicament right now. God does not work off of man's timing. God can interrupt man's timing anytime that he feels like it and accelerate you right where you need to be. And I believe it's a word for this house. I believe it's a word for you that God is doing an acceleration in your life. If you would just give it vision, if you would just give it provision, if you would just understand that it's peace and it's patient, it's care, God can accelerate you and put you in your rightful place. He's doing an acceleration in your life. He's been preparing you for this moment. Not that moment, this moment. He's been setting you up just for this moment. So get ready to close out. You can stand to your feet. Get ready to close out. Vision. Provision. Patience. Peace. It's all available right now. But watch this, watch this. I find it very interesting that when Adam was in the garden, because of the mistake that they made, Adam hid themselves. In the garden, Jesus exposed himself. That Jesus loves us so much that he's given us vision and purpose and passion for life to do the very thing that we're called to do. Not only did he die to remove the sins out of our life, but he exposed ourselves to get us back in alignment with God so that we can have the very thing that we need in order to do. Adam hid Jesus exposed. What kind of love is that? That's a love that understands what's in heaven is now in you. And Jesus will go through anything to make sure what's stored up in heaven gets to earth so that you can fulfill what the kingdom wants to do in your life. That's that type of love. Then the enemy cannot interrupt what I want to do in your life. That the enemy cannot disrupt the plans and the passion and the purpose that I have in your life. That I love you so much. I will be born through a, a virgin by the, by the name of Murray, hung on a cross and exposed because I want you to receive my love. Because my love is here, not there. His love is here. Receive his love today, my daughter. 
That's what he's saying. Receive my love today, my son. Because my love is getting ready to take you there. But you will only embrace it if you appreciate here. Appreciate here. I'm in a season right now that I didn't plan for this season to be. God is saying I'm right here. God is saying I'm right here. I couldn't plan or dream this or even thought that God was getting God is saying I'm right here. I thought my life was going to be different. I, I thought my marriage was going to look like this. I thought I was going to be in a career. By now, I'm this certain age. I thought I would be married. And God is saying, my daughter, my son, I am right here. I'm right here. Despite what your life may look like right now, guess what? I'm right here. And the same thing that God has been whispering to me, he's saying the same thing to this church right now. Don't miss what I'm doing because you're too focused on there and you're not settling right here. Our eyeballs are constantly in the future while the Holy Spirit is hovering around right here. We're missing because we got a giraffe neck trying to get to the future. And we're chasing, 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 chasing. I don't, I'm learning more in my life, family. I don't want to be busy. I want to be productive. Just because you have a busy schedule does not mean you're productive in Christ. This is not even part of the, I don't know who this is for. If your schedule is always full, you're, 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 you're mismanaging your time. Here's what God even said this week to me. Anthony, your schedule needs to be about 75, 80%. Because things are always going to happen. Things are always going to show up. So now you're constantly, your, your schedule is full. So when things show up, instead of operating at 85, 90%, now you're at 120, 125%, and you have nothing to give, and your family's getting leftovers. You have got to make sure you're balancing your life the correct way, because when you balance your life the correct way, you will always see the provision that's in your life. We're missing the provision in our life because we're busy. And God is saying, I don't want you busy, I want you productive. There's a difference. In this season, what's the vision for your life? Vision. Here's what, we're answering a call to get ready to close it. We're answering a call that Adam did not answer. Only reason why we're able to answer it is because Jesus answered it for us. Here I am. Nobody else can do it. Here I am. I'll do it. So now we're able to e echo the call that Jesus said on a cross. Here I am. I'm the one in a garden. If there's no other way, don't take this cup away from me. Jesus answered the call so that you can answer the call today. Here I am, God. Take me as I am. Here I am. Take me. I know I'm not right. I know I don't have everything. I know I'm not the smartest in the room. I know I don't have the degrees I got. I know I'm not, I'm not connected. I don't have all the adequate resources. Take me as I am, God. This is all I have to offer. And God is saying, that's enough. Why? Because I'm in the room with you. I'm in the room with you. If you were just going to me, I'm in the room with you. If you were to show up at that interview, I'm in the room with you. If you would just begin to write that vision plan, I'm in the room with you. If you would begin to just cast a new plan for your marriage, I'm in the room with you. What God wants to do in your life, he wants us to embrace and let, him, let it be known that he's right there with you. You need to hug yourself today as if God is hugging you right now. And God is saying, my daughter, my son, I am with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you in this. Here. 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 Father God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for your word. That even as our, our mind is focused on you even right now, let it be known, Lord God, that you are right here in the midst. You're with us. We embrace it through the struggle, through the pain, through the disappointment. 
We believe even right now, Lord God, that you're, we are rediscovering our passion in you. Where the fire has gone out, set a new blaze. Where we're feeling as we're running off our third and fourth wind, send new strength, fresh wind to run this race that you have created us to run. Where we're in, in, in a position where, where we don't have vision, where we're, we're feeling as though we're walking double-minded, we are believing in this season, in this now, God is taking away the double-minded and he's given us a clear mind, a straight path. We are believing for the brokenness to be healed. We are believing for the broken paths to be made straight. When you show up, Lord God, anything that's out of order gets put back in order. So for anything that's out of order in your life right now, put your mind on it right now and say, God, we call order to this. You are the creator. We don't run to any other manufacturer for what something that needs to be fixed. We go to the creator. You are the creator. Place it back in order. We love you so much. We honor you. We thank you. It is in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the water that he gives us does not leave us thirsty. And we are, we are poured fresh and new today right here right here in this spot. And we're so grateful for the word that helps to keep us connected right here with God and the here and the now, what he's doing fresh in our lives right here today. And so we thank you for that word today, God. And we won't take one step to the front, to the left, to the right, but we're gonna stay right here where you are, where our peace is, where our provision is. And you know, he gives the provision. He gives seed to the sower. And this is a special time in our service where we get to honor God and worship Him with our provision, with our offering. You know, Pastor Anthony already said He would give us grace in abundance, right? And just last Sunday, the greatest demonstration of love for God so loved the world that He gave. He gave. And so right here today, whatever God has put on your heart to give, for us to be the hands and feet of his love to people in this community and around us. We just ask you to open up your phone. You can text DCONL, DC Online for short, to 833-399-7200, and you'll receive a secure link with which you can give. There are also offering buckets that are going back and forth that you can place your offering in. Um, or in the app. You could go to Celebration app and give securely online. And that's the way that we get to show God's love in our community, in our services and around us. And it's our way of showing him that, you know what, we trust you, God. We trust you that what you give to us and you put in our hands, Lord, we give it back to you because that's where multiplication is. What he gives to us, he doesn't, he doesn't take it and make it less. No, he's a God of abundance. And what he puts in our hand, he multiplies and he makes more and he keeps pouring back and he keeps pouring back because that's the kind of God he is. And so we thank him with our provision and we give today and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your outpouring. And we thank you that you give us seed to sow. And with a grateful heart, we give back to you today. Go grow, multiply. We will see you again. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Hey, 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 listen, if this is your first time here, it's no coincidence that he preached about being here. You weren't supposed to be anywhere else in the DMV area today, but here. So if today is your first time, we really want to connect with you. Please stop outside to our connect station um, and talk to somebody. We want to know your name. We want to know where you're from. Um, how can we get involved in your life, your children's life if you have kids, your marriage? We want to connect with you and we want to be involved. This is not just a church, this is family, and this is community, and nobody should have to do it alone, whether you've been in the church all your life or you're uh, absolutely new to it. 
So stop by our Connect station and connect with somebody. You can also go online to connect. You can go to our app to connect. However you want to do it, we love to see your face out there. Um, so please stop by and connect with us so we can get connected with you. And if you're new here or you're looking to get more plugged in, say next Sunday, May 1st. <laughs> That's where we're having Next Step Sunday for just 15 minutes. That's right. Let's, let's give God a round of applause. Next Sunday, next Sunday. Next Sunday is Next Step Sunday. And for just 15 minutes right here after service here in the sanctuary, you can get more plugged into life here at Celebration. And we'll tell you what your next steps can be. Answer any questions that you have. We're going to be having this every first Sunday of the month. So if you miss next week, there will be another one. And we hope that you'll be here to join us. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pray to get you home safe. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you to honor and bless you. Lord, thank you for this word, Father, that we received today. Lord, thank you for the season that we're in that's right here, Father. Not where we're going, Lord, but where we are here now. Father, we ask for safe travel and mercies for everybody here, Lord, to get home. And Lord, to think of you not just on a Monday morning, but a Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through. So next time we see you, Father, bless everybody that's here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good week.